Welcome to our second episode of Observable Explorations in which we introduce Observable. I do want to begin with a warning, and that is you'll be disappointed at how easy this is. So last time we had a little counter application and we looked at three ways of working with the counter. In the first, we had the state managed in the view itself. Our button action incremented the count and we displayed the new count on top of the button in our V stack. Our second approach was to store the state in the model and publish updates in an at publish property from the controller. In our third approach, we used combine in the model itself and published the updates there and relayed those updates from the controller. This time we're going to introduce observable, and so we'll start with a very simple model. Model must be a class to be observable, and so we'll start there with a very simple property. It's an int called count. Here's how we make the model observable, and that requires that we import observation. Observable may look like an attribute, but actually it's a Swift macro, and so we can expand it to see what's provided by that macro. This is the code that we wrote, and here's what gets provided by the macro. First, in an extension, model is declared to conform to the observable protocol. For the most part, this is just a marker protocol like error. Second, there's a private property added, which is underscore dollar sign observation registrar. An observation registrar is where we'll register activity such as getting and setting the property so that SwiftUI can see what's going on. We also add a private property underscore count. And for those of you that have been around a while, this feels a lot like the early days of properties where we had this synthesized instance variable and we had the getters and setters synthesized as well. Count was the property that we declared, and so the observation will be tracked. On the other hand, observation will be ignored for the registrar and for this underscore count. So the only thing that is publicly observable is this count. Also added is this access, and what access does is it registers that something tried to get count with the observation registrar. With mutation is tracking the setter, and so that if we change the value of count, we're registering that with the observation registrar. As a reminder, this is what our code looked like. All that was added by the macro. We'll add a controller later, but for now, let's connect the main view directly to the model. In the main view, we create an instance of the model, and we declare it to be at state so that we're holding onto it if our view goes away and comes back. What do we see on the screen? Well, let's define our body. And here's our V stack again, and on top is our text, and on the bottom is our button. Our button action is to ask the model to increase its count. There's no observable happening there. The text displays the model's count's description, and so when the count changes, the observable model lets us know that we need to update that and refresh our screen. Let's dig into this mechanism a bit. I'm going to add a second property called local count, which is just a string and we'll display the local count on top of the model's count. Here in main view, we'll import observation. Now in real life, we would never do the following. I'm just doing it to illustrate part of the mechanism. Add another extension to main view and inside of it, define a method called model listener and model listener will use this function with observation tracking on change. Inside of this first closure goes the observable properties that are being tracked. Inside of the second closure goes what we're going to do when the property that we're tracking changes. As I said, in real life, we don't use this explicitly. We can, but it's really there for Swift UI. So in our case, we're going to track model.count. That's the property we want to track to see when it changes. And when it changes, we'll update our local count with model.count.description. That's what we'll do when the property model.count changes. So let's call our model listener when our view appears and run our app. The app launches, we tap our button, we see both of these increment, but we've got zero for local count and we've got one for the other count, keep tapping, and the zero never updates. So our local count only updates once. So after the update, we need to say, keep listening. And so let's add this line model listener. So on change, after we update our local count, we call model listener recursively. And now when we run it, we see both of them update on each button press, but the local count is one behind model.count. It continues, but it's one update behind. And that's tied to how Swift UI updates. 
Recall with observable object, the notifications are will change, not did change. SwiftUI needs to note when something's about to change. And so as I said, in real life, we don't use this method explicitly. It's really for the benefit of SwiftUI. So let's go ahead and remove that code we added just for me to demonstrate this mechanism. So what else can we see about observable? Well, that's gonna have to wait until next time. Next time we'll insert a controller in between the model and the main view.